The purpose of this video is to clarify the different types of quantitative research that we see in the literature. As research readers, this is an important step in critiquing an article. How do we know what kind of quantitative study has been done? Well, broadly speaking, there's two main purposes to quantitative research. The researcher wants to describe something or to test a new treatment or intervention. This means there are two major categories of quantitative research. The first is descriptive, also known as non-experimental research, and the second is experimental research, of which there are several types. Let's start by discussing descriptive or non-experimental research. Non-experimental research is typically done to answer questions such as how many people were involved? What are the characteristics of the group? Is there a relationship between one variable and another? Here are some examples. One descriptive study might be conducted to answer the question, what is the average length of stay for hospital patients in Ontario? Another might be done to answer the question, what is the level of satisfaction from women who received care from a midwife during their labour and delivery? Or, what kinds of health problems does a community health nurse see most frequently? And finally, is there a relationship between age and the incidence of falls while in hospital? What do all these questions have in common? There's no intervention. There's no new treatment that's being tested. The researcher is simply studying something that's already occurring and not attempting to control events. People are not assigned to groups for study purposes. How will you recognize this type of study when you look at an article? First of all, you might see some words such as the purpose of this study was to describe or to explore or to examine. The second clue comes from things that are not being said. There won't be any mention of something being tested. There'll be no mention of a new treatment under study or any mention of random sampling. If someone is doing an experiment, they're going to refer to all those points. The benefits of a non-experimental study is that they give us an accurate picture of a situation that can be used to identify or describe a problem that can be used for planning purposes. So for example, if we found that 50% of a community health nurse's caseload is made up of people with diabetes, extra in-service training could be provided on this topic. Or if we found there's a strong relationship between being over the age of 80 and the number of falls in hospital, preventive measures could be put in place on admission for these patients. The major limitation of these studies is that they simply describe, they point out problems, they don't tell us the best treatment or the remedy for those problems, and that's an important limitation. The second major category of quantitative research is experimental research. The purpose of these studies is to establish cause and effect. The studies go further than descriptive or non-experimental studies because the goal is to test a new intervention. The results of these studies are vital because they tell us best practices or treatments. Experiments are done to answer questions such as, does watching a short video on breastfeeding before discharge increase the number of women who breastfeed? If all nurses do a pressure sore risk assessment on patient admission to the unit, will the incidence of these pressure sores be lower? If a nurse applies an ice cube to an injection site for 15 seconds before the injection, will children report less pain at the site? In order for a study to be classified as a true experiment, three conditions need to be present. The intervention or treatment is being tested. There must be random sampling to an experimental or control group. One gets the new treatment, the control group does not. And the study is conducted under controlled conditions. These three points are what distinguish a true experiment and they're really important to remember. Achieving all these conditions is very difficult to do in nursing. We work in the nitty gritty world of hospitals and community settings. We don't work in laboratories. Sometimes we can't control events or assign people to groups as required for a true experiment. In that case, we do what's called a quasi-experiment. In this situation, we are testing a new treatment or intervention, but we use convenience sampling instead of random sampling. We don't assign people to groups. We typically study what is naturally occurring. Let's do an example where we compare a true experiment and a quasi-experiment. A researcher hypothesizes that listening to classical music before an exam will reduce anxiety and improve test scores. In a true experiment, the researcher randomly selects half the class and requires them to listen to classical music for one hour before the exam. The other half of the class does not listen to any music at all. This is a true experiment because the researcher tests an intervention, the classical music. There's random sampling to an experimental group, the classical music group, and to a control group, the no music group. The situation is carefully controlled. 
but there are problems with this. Is it realistic for a researcher to be able to do this study? How many students are going to want to do this before an important exam? What if those assigned to the classical music group hate it and object? It might be more practical, more realistic, for the researcher to do a, qua a quasi-experimental study instead. The researcher identifies 30 students in the class who routinely listen to classical music and 30 that don't. He asks the 30 classical music fans to listen for one hour before their exam. All students then have their test scores measured and compared. This is quasi-experimental study because there was, there was an intervention, music was being tested, convenient sampling was used, he didn't force them into groups, just asked people to follow their usual practice, and there was still an element of control. The benefits? The study is more practical to, to conduct and it's less intrusive for the students before an exam. The limitation? If the classical music group has higher test scores, it might be the result of classical music, but it could also be the result of several other factors. Maybe those who liked classical music were more studious anyway or brighter to begin with, and that's the limitation of convenience sampling. How will you know which is which, which is quasi-experimental and which is experimental? Well, to sum up, is there no intervention being tested? Then it's likely a descriptive or non-experimental study. If you have an intervention and you also see random sampling in a control group, it's a true experiment. And finally, if you see an intervention being tested but there's convenient sampling being used and it's lacking some elements of control, perhaps no control group, it's likely a quasi-experimental study. So to summarize, it's important to be able to distinguish these three types of quantitative research as this will influence how we critique, critique the study when we read it.